usbr.gov slash BIL, usbr.gov slash BIL. Thank you for taking the appropriate action if you do not want to be included in this recorded information session. All remarks today are on the record and for attribution. Since we last spoke in the fall, Reclamation has continued its work on the bipartisan infrastructure law. These information sessions are designed to update you on our processes and address your questions. We plan on addressing as many questions as possible during the, the question and answer period following the presentation today. Updated information about Reclamation's implementation of the law is always available at www.usbr.gov bill. Also, feel free to submit your questions, comments to usbr.bill at usbr.gov, and we will work to address your questions. We also have a growing list of frequently asked questions, and we hope that is a helpful resource for you. We are committed to transparency throughout this process and appreciate your support of this historic opportunity to improve our nation's water infrastructure. This afternoon, it is my honor to welcome Commissioner Camille Kalumnum Tutin for opening remarks. Commissioner? Thank you, Peter, and good afternoon to everyone. Happy New Year. We are at 248 bill funded projects announced as of January 19th of this year, and a lot that you'll hear about today. We have allocated 1.4 billion as of today. And 1.09 billion of that is in the seven Colorado River Basin states. Next up, as far as announcements, we'll have environmental water resource projects notice of funding opportunity, which is roughly $80 million, aquatic ecosystem notice of funding opportunity, and rural water project allocations for fiscal year 2023. And based on our success in 22 and starting off strong this year, we have had great participation in the implementation of the bipartisan infrastructure law. And we've had great tribal participation in our Native American Affairs Technical Assistance Program, which is well funded, but not appropriated for bill. So at our other sessions that targeted to tribes, Deputy Commissioner Palumbo invited even more participation from tribes as part of our implementation of a, the bipartisan infrastructure law. But together with all of our stakeholders, tribes can implement the objectives of bill in the areas of equity, water reliability, and resiliency, and resilience to drought for everyone's benefit. So thank you for joining us today. Please sign up for the notices for our funding opportunities online. Certainly, Chelsea dropped in the chat our web page for this that we update when, with the most recent information. and. As we go through these processes, one of the things we're looking at is making sure your applications are complete. So we've got slides there to help you through that process because we want to be able to get you that money. So there's several new pieces of information that you'll see today, including the latest map of where the bill projects are. And we're really excited about where those roughly 250 projects are across the West. But we really wanna put more dots on that map and we need you to help us to keep that momentum going. So I look forward to your partnership um, this year, um, and thank you very much for working with me and with the Bureau of Reclamation to make this a success. Thank you, and Peter, back to you. Thank you, Commissioner. At this time, I would like to introduce uh, Assistant Director for Program and Budget, Beth Hughes-Brown, and Deputy Director of Operations, Matt Massieri. Matt? Thanks, Peter. Thank you, Commissioner, and good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this update on uh, Reclamation's implementation of the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law. As mentioned, I'm Matt Mossieri. I work in the Operations Group here in the Commissioner's Office with Reclamation, and together with Beth Hughes-Brown in our Budget Office, we co-lead implementation of the Bipartisan Infrastructure Law with a big team of Reclamation folks and with stakeholder partners like yourselves. Uh, Beth and I will go through this PowerPoint together. It's only about 20 slides and we will uh, sort of phone a friend with some of our subject matter experts who will help us on some of the more specific slides as we go through. Uh, just to start us off overview, we'll talk about the implementation backdrop, what's going on in the larger reclamation context as we do this, and uh, also talk about 
sort of what is at work right now and as we start off uh, calendar year 2023. Uh, we want to give you guys an orientation of the past, present, and future of BIL. What have we done? What's happening now and what's about to come out as the commissioner gave an overview on. And we will work through some other tips uh, on uh, applying for grant programs and some of the context around things like Buy America and our current staffing uh, challenges as we continue to staff up uh, to surmount the challenge of BIL implementation. Uh, next slide, please. So in general terms, implementation backdrop is, as we know, uh, the West has been gripped by uh, persistent drought for several years. Um, uh, in California recently, we've had some very beneficial uh, precipitation that has made national news uh, with some flooding in the state. And um, nonetheless, we are in a situation where we're simultaneously in flood operations on things like the Central Valley Project, but also still in drought conditions as monitored by the US Drought Monitor here. That's just a general overview of the context. Uh, and so as we move through the presentation, you'll see how we've been trying to apply some of those resources to the challenges of drought. Uh, with that, I'm gonna hand off to Beth Hughes Brown to work us through the next few slides. So if you went back to the slide before us, you're looking at where the drought is. Uh, and this particular slide shows you where our projects are dedicated. There is a great deal of overlap, and that's not a coincidence, of course. So for those of you who are challenged and cannot read those, those uh, dots there, I'm, I'm going to tell you what the colors mean. Uh, blue, water smart, by far our most prodigious in terms of the number of projects. Red orange is aging infrastructure. Green is Colorado River endangered species. Purple is rural water projects. Orange is storage and conveyance projects and yellow is dam safety. Uh, and that those awards have gone to all 17 Western states plus Alaska, Hawaii and Puerto Rico. Uh, and of course, they're continuing to roll out. Next slide, please. So what you're looking at here is our uh, an overall summary of the money going out the door. More than 1.4 billion BIL funded projects were allocated at the project level as of January 2023. Uh, that's roughly, it's almost the same as our annual normal uh, discretionary budget. So that's a lot of money. That's a lot of efficiency. And the, the folks that are on this call presenting to you today are the ones responsible for that efficiency. Um, for example, I'm just going to give you one example, uh, is the rural water projects, um, and that was $420 million in the first year uh, for, uh, for six projects um, and, and similar projects in this next fiscal year to use the $248 million that's in the fiscal 23 spend plan. So that's just one example of the uh, 12 programs. Um, 14 BIL funded or BIL related funding opportunities. We call them NOFOs. If you're one of the cool kids, you have to say NOFO. Notice of funding operations or application cycles have been issued to date. New programs are coming on board. One of them is called small storage. The regular storage has been much larger. There's a small storage, aquatic ecosystem restoration, and environmental water resources projects with new categories. The, la the latter there is going to be coming out very soon, uh, so please pay attention. Uh, uh, get Make sure you're getting your notifications about that. Next slide, please. This is a, a listing of all of the uh, NOFOs that have been coming out, and you'll notice the one at the top aging infrastructure is different in that it is not part of WaterSmart, uh, and in fiscal 22, we had 136 applications totaling 1.08 billion for $240 million worth of actual funding. And that was allocated to 46 of those projects. Um, for fiscal 23, we've, we're just getting word on how many people have applied for the same, for, for money in that category for 649 million in this fiscal year. Um, 87 applications have been received, totally $2.3 billion. I say this with a little emphasis because you can tell that there's an awful lot of work that has to happen between the time we get those applications and the, and the decisions are made. 
uh, they, there's a lot of lot of work by a lot of different parties to call those down and, and end up with them with the uh, best projects. I'd like to turn this over now to my colleague Avra Morgan, uh, who is with the Water Resources and Planning Office to talk more about WaterSmart. Thank you, Beth. Um, so this slide shows you the amounts of funding that have been allocated, bill funding that is, to the WaterSmart program. And just to provide a, a brief overview of, of WaterSmart, it is a umbrella initiative that includes um, about eight different funding categories for different types of projects that support improvements to water management, ranging from water reuse and recycling all the way to conservation and planning uh, and projects that support uh, environmental benefits. So this program is operated out of the office that I work in in Denver, and it is uh, funding is allocated through a competitive funding opportunity for each of these program areas. Uh, these funding opportunities, uh, Beth's referred to as NOFOs, Notice of Funding Opportunity, are issued annually, uh, and projects are selected using the criteria that's included in those funding opportunities. Uh, we have a, uh, we recruit uh, reclamation staff knowledgeable about the program area to review those proposals uh, and rank them against the criteria that are available to the applicants in those funding opportunities. And um, the projects are then selected through a competitive process. So just a note about um, the amount of bill funding received for some of these project categories. You can see there on this slide that WaterSmart grants uh, was allocated $400 million in bill funding. This includes, uh, under this program, we provide funding for projects that include water conservation and efficiency projects, uh, drought projects, and projects that uh, use a natural and nature-based features to support water conservation. Title 16, Water Reclamation and Reuse uh, Program is Reclamation's Water Reuse and Recycling Program. This received $550 million in bill funding uh, there is also something new coming called large scale water recycling, which kind of explains itself. These are large scale projects uh, and we're expecting to have a funding opportunity in the spring of 2023 for the large scale projects. And we have 450 million in bill funding for that. Uh, desalination projects received 250 million. Uh, and then the Cooperative Watershed Management Program this supports watershed groups and the development of watershed restoration plans, as well as scoping and planning for restoration type projects with environmental benefits. This program received 100 million in bill funding. Uh, and I'll just note that there's no cost share required for that cooperative watershed management program. It's a little different than our other programs. Uh, the aquatic ecosystem and restoration and protection projects are a new funding category, uh, and this is for larger scale water, uh, water restoration projects with environmental benefits, including the removal of barriers to fish passage. We've received 250 million for that program, and we will have a funding opportunity, the first ever, coming out soon, um, hopefully uh, later this month. Multi-benefit projects is a new authority that we received in the bill uh, language, and this supports projects that have environmental benefits, but also projects that have benefits to tribal and commercial fisheries uh, and recreation type projects. And we received 100 million for that for that authority, which we implement through our environmental water resources projects. And that's the one that Beth mentioned earlier that Environmental Water Resources Projects is already out, or no, it's about to come out, sorry, about to come out in just the next few 10 days, two weeks-ish. Um, so you'll see that coming up soon. Next slide. So some of the projects uh, or the funding opportunities that uh, are open soon uh, include planning and, and pre-construction for water recycling, desalination, and large-scale water recycling projects. So this is planning, right, to get people ready for building one of these uh, Title 16 water reclamation and reuse projects. It's a great first step uh, to get people ready for the construction phase. 
And this one is out on the street and available right now on grants.gov and closes uh, at the end of February there, February 28th. That Environmental Water Resources Projects funding opportunity, that's the one that I just mentioned. It includes funding up to $3 million per project uh, for, pro and actually the cost share in this one is um, up to 75% federal cost share, 25% non-federal. And that is so long as the project has uh, primarily ecological benefits. And this is the one where we're incorporating that multi-benefit projects authority. So there's also um, a recognition in this funding opportunity that projects that have benefits to fisheries, recreation, um, and, and environmental benefits can, uh, can be eligible for funding and can, uh, uh, be selected under this funding opportunity. Next slide. So the Aquatic East Ecosystem Restorations Project, this is the one that I mentioned will be coming out in late January. And this is for, it's it's similar to that Environmental Water Resources Projects, but for bigger restoration projects. So this is, um, you know, we're looking at funding amounts between three and 20 million. The cost share uh, per the statute is 65% federal. And it's going to include both uh, planning and design category, as well as a construction category. Projects can include uh, removal of fish barriers. They can also include um, restoration of, um, of aquatic ecosystems. So whether that's um, you know, returning the stream geomorphology to be in a more natural state to support habitat, reconnecting the river with the floodplain, uh, Revegetation, removal of invasive species. Uh, there's a broad range of projects eligible under that one. And uh, again, the water uh, water reuse and recycling planning is already out on the street. That planning funding opportunity. Um, all of the funding opportunities that I've talked about for Water Smart we offer annually. And so all of the ones that were shown uh, to have been offered last year will again be offered uh, in the coming year in 2023. We use Bill funding and appropriations uh, where we have it so we can fund more projects each time. Um, and that that is a summary of the water smart funding opportunities. And I'm always happy to answer questions about water smart. The next I'll turn it over to Matt Mossier. Thanks, Avra. So one of the biggest program areas, in fact, the biggest program area in reclamations appropriation under the BIL is for aging infrastructure. 3.2 billion of our 8.3 is aging infrastructure. And so uh, wanted to get the next couple slides to orient folks to the fact that we are getting that money out the door as well. Those are for primarily for projects that Reclamation owns, but uh, in, in the case of about two thirds of our infrastructure, uh, two thirds of Reclamation's infrastructure are operated pursuant to contracts with our partners, water districts, and they are very eligible for these uh, funds uh, through the aging infrastructure or extraordinary maintenance um, provisions of the BIL. That's a photo of some work that was underway last year on the New York Canal in Idaho that Reclamation owns and our partners operate. The funding under BIL that we've allocated in FY22 is going to feather in to that exact project and combine with already uh, allocated funds for it to accelerate project completion on the New York Canal. And that story will be repeated in dozens of other projects uh, under our BIL implementation. If you could go to the next slide, please. Um, so uh, dozens of projects are in active implementation right now, whether that's in the final planning and design or actual construction. Uh, we've posted those on our website and we have completed the first the FY22 allocation. We're going to announce the FY23 allocation soon. Uh, we are uh, pursuing the statutorily required application process for our aging infrastructure or XM monies. And then we post the actual project allocations that come out of those application periods on our website to make the announcements and enter, enter into the necessary contracts with our customers to move those funds. As context, um, our, our Reclamation's BIL implementation is also being integrated with the departments of the Department of Interior's uh, integration and implementation of the bipartisan infrastructure law. So one area that we wanted to flag that might be of interest to some of the folks on this call is ecosystem restoration. The Department of the Interior got an appropriation for ecosystem restoration, and we are working with the department on sourcing and cataloging projects for potential funding 
under that, along with the other bureaus inside the department. We don't have uh, slides dedicated to that on this call, but we wanted to mention it so that we give you some of the other context around uh, BIL implementation. It's happening at the reclamation level, but it's happening at the departmental level too. And we are, of course, participating in that and helping with the integration of, uh, of that work. Uh, next slide, please. So a big benefit about the reclamation program, it's crowdsourced. You know, about two thirds of our actual program relies on some kind of application. And that basically assures strong support, in some cases, cost share from our stakeholder community. And it assures that the projects, the money are going, the money is going to real projects. All of our water smart funding opportunities that Avra went through are open to tribes. There are some other parts of our portfolio that are more limited, like the appropriation for dam safety. That money was appropriated to reclamation to work on dam safety on specific reclamation dams. But for the most part, the BIL implementation is very open to all of our stakeholder community, tribes, uh, water user groups, NGOs as well, as you'll see in some of the forthcoming um, water smart funding opportunities. So want to get that point across as we move through the presentation that it's it's very much uh, a group effort, a team effort. Um, next slide, I will hand off uh, back to Beth Hughes Brown. Um, so you probably have gotten the point pretty clearly that a lot of our opportunities are under uh, water smart. As a matter of fact, so far there have been 155 of our projects that went to water smart uh, and and uh, 25 to title 16. So the total between the two of them is 180. That's a lot of projects. So please avail yourself if it's appropriate for you to get some of that funding to get some of your projects funded using the, that mechanism. What you're seeing right there is how you sign up to get the alerts for the new NOFOs. Please do, please make sure you're part of uh, our success here. Uh, next slide, please. This is this is uh, taking us off on a side jaunt here for a second. The Inflation Reduction Act is not part of the BIL. It's a different act of Congress. It's uh, a lot of money. You can see the number there, $4.6 billion for, for four different purposes. Uh, and uh, we're just putting this in as, for, as an informational purpose only. You'll see other um, stakeholder presentations that are dedicated just to the IRA. But we wanted to make sure you're aware of this. This is the, the, the main premise of putting this up here is so you can see that it's for specific purposes. That is analogous to the BIL where for those 12 different programs, each of them has their own purpose. And so that's what the funding is for, the purpose uh, that is set out in the BIL itself. Uh, it's it, The implementation of the IRA has already started. Very exciting stuff. And if you want more information about that, please see the, uh, at the address there below, usbr.gov inflation hyphen reduction hyphen act. Next slide, please. So other things that we are doing to implement uh, uh, BIL, uh, this is this is very important. Uh, all of you um, ha who have a newspaper or watch the news know about what's going on with the Colorado River and the drought there and the and how um, the the folks who use that water are affected by it. Uh, more than a billion dollars from BIL out um, um, the BIL has been allocated to projects in the Colorado River Basin in one way or another. That's endangered species purposes, drought relief, aging infrastructure, and more. And of course, more BIL allocations are coming to the to the Colorado Basin. Um, uh, and and uh, so also the IRA has a lot of funding very specifically for uh, the Colorado Basin. Uh, but but for BIL, we're already well underway and and doing everything we possibly can to help in that very critical situation. Uh, so next slide, please. And I will turn this over to my colleague, Heidi Morrow of the Mission Support Organization to fill you in on some information about grants and the, what you need to know. Thank you, Beth, and good afternoon, everyone. Today, I wanna to just share some information on the grant process. The grant process at Reclamation is governed by the federal regulations and Department of the Interior and Reclamation Policy. As Oliver mentioned before, all of the bill funded programs are competitive, meaning that applications are required to have certain items included upon submission 
and are rated against criteria provided in the specific Notice of Funding Opportunity, or NOFO. There are several documents and steps to complete by the applicant during the application period, and these are outlined in each NOFO. As such, I suggest that if you are interested in applying for a grant, that you start on your application early. Upon receipt of the application package, a review is completed, which can take several months. The length of time is impacted by the number of applications that we receive, as well as the complexity of the program. After selection of successful applicants, there are several more steps that are required by both reclamation and the grantee prior to awarding the grant. Next slide, please. The process that occurs during the review of the application package and after the selection is made includes items such as preparation of a statement of work, validation of the budget, verification of registration in SAM.gov, review of past performance, and any past single audit reports. For awareness, other items that impact the grant selection and award process included this, include the significant increase that we've had in both funding and number of awards. One critical piece to help the process move more quickly is providing a complete and timely application package. So please pay very close attention to the requirements listed in the NOFO for the grant for which you are applying. If you do have any questions about applying for a grant during the application period, there are points of contact listed in each NOFO. There are also several resources outside of reclamation that you can use if you're applying for a grant. SAM.gov provides information on how to register in the system, which is required for all federal grant recipients. Grants.gov, which is the mechanism that reclamation and the Department of Interior use to post NOFOs and for applications to, excuse me, and for individuals and uh, entities to apply for uh, grants has numerous training videos on using the system to apply for grants. Resources internal to reclamation include our WaterSmart webpage at www.usbr.gov forward slash WaterSmart. Uh, we also have information and training webinars that are held shortly after the NOFO is published. Of course, the NOFO itself. And if you are selected for a grant, uh, we hold webinars after selections are announced. Next slide, please. If you are selected to receive a grant from one of our many reclamation programs and the funding is used for infrastructure, you will be subject to the requirements of the Buy America provisions of the BIL. In general, reclamation's financial assistance programs that will result in a constructed item must comply with these provisions. The programs both covered and exempt from Buy America are listed here on this slide. Next slide, please. If uh, you do receive a grant and you feel that you will not be able to comply with the provisions of Buy America, there is a process to request a waiver exempting purchases from the provisions of the Buy America requirements. DOI did have a six month adjustment period waiver that expired on January 12th. So at this time, the requirements of Buy America apply to all purchases made unless you have a specific waiver. Currently, there are four proposed waivers, a small financial assistance waiver, which would exempt grants less than $250,000 from the Buy America provisions, a de minimis waiver, which would exempt grants that have less than 5% of the total fundings, of total applicable funding spent on infrastructure, and specific project level waivers for both for AMI water meters for Santa Clarita and the city of Rialto that are making their way through the process. These waivers and any future proposed waivers can be found at www.doi.gov forward slash grants forward slash buy America forward slash waivers for comment. We will drop this link into the uh, chat. If you would like to pursue a waiver for your project, please reach out to your grant officer, technical representative or project manager that you work with on a regular basis. With that, I will now turn it over to Brian Rainey, Reclamation's Human Capital Officer for a discussion on staffing. Brian? Thanks, Heidi. And as Heidi said, I'm Brian Rainey, the Human Capital Officer. I have the uh, pleasure of 
reporting out on the, the positive progress we're making on our hiring efforts for BIL specifically. Um, and all these, these hirings, as you can see, more than 200 are all due to the, the efforts of our six servicing HR offices and of, of course our hiring managers. Uh, they're using a variety of hiring authorities and hiring flexibilities, both competitive and non-competitive. Uh, and our largest recruitment efforts are obviously within USA Jobs, as you can see. There's 187 infrastructure jobs posted in USA Jobs, and uh, that that's amongst uh, six different federal agencies, not just the Department of the Interior, but also, as you can see, the, the, the majority of those are with uh, reclamation. And what we're doing with those to, to highlight them is we're tagging them. And when we tag them, uh, the first thing people see when they open up USA Jobs uh, they see the BIL positions. Uh, so uh, with those tagged jobs, there, there's a variety of different jobs, different positions, different grades in different locations uh, to include student positions in our Pathways program, as well as recent graduate uh, positions. Uh, so just a, a pre-marketing, if you know you go to USA Jobs and are recent graduates, uh, they can find a job there and we'd be happy to take them on. Uh, with that, uh, unless there's questions, I'll turn it over to Matt. Thanks, Brian. I'll bring us home here and we'll uh, finish the PowerPoint and uh, proceed to comments, questions, and answers. Uh, so um, I want to just highlight something that Heidi said on her slides about financial assistance and grants. Since so much of our BL, BIL implementation is happening through the instrument of grants, um, I've said this before. Uh, but everyone that is applying or considering applying for some of these funding opportunities, we need you. We need you to be part of BIL because your projects are what uh, help improve drought resiliency and help us execute uh, the BIL statutory mission. But please know that our reclamation does have a lot of uh, resources right now that Congress gave us for these programs. Uh, that does not uh, translate into hey, let's send in an incomplete application right now. The reason we put those slides in there is we really want to emphasize the fact that uh, the opposite is true. We have lots of money right now. That means there's lots of competition for the reviewer's time that review those applications. So incomplete applications, it's not hard to reject them right now in favor of complete applications. So uh, there's very labor intensive work associated with federal financial assistance. That work is dictated by federal wide requirements that were cited on those slides. Uh, so we want to orient everyone to that, that sort of footing that we're on. Uh, we've always been on that footing. We're especially on it now, given the workload. And as final, as, as Heidi's final slide said, uh, we really want you to help us help you uh, by have uh, those, those applications as complete as possible. In the funding opportunities, you'll see uh, contact human beings that are listed. Their direct phone numbers are in those funding opportunities. You don't, it's not a 1-800 line. Their direct emails are in those NOFOs. Call them up, ask some questions, use the resources because um, we try to make uh, the barriers to entry as, as minimal as possible. Um, so with that, um, yeah, BIL implementation is happening now. It consists of these funding opportunities. It consists of uh, internal formulation for things like dam safety and rural water. It consists of application periods for things like aging infrastructure and it's uh, these spend plans that we're posting. It's all translating into uh, progress on the ground and uh, we're confident that it will be a success because it it's a collaborative effort it's us and you uh, and uh, it's a focus on performance results viable projects and executing funding for things that we know are needed uh, so thank you guys for dialing in today thank you for going with us on the journey of implementing BIL and with that I'll hand back to uh, Peter to lead us through the Q&A's thank you Matt um, at this time, uh, we'll begin our uh, question and answer session. Um, we'll address as many questions that you may have. Um, please uh, raise your hand using the hand icon at the top of your screen. Um, you can also submit your questions to usbr.bill at usbr.gov. Um, so right now, please, if you have any questions or comments, please raise your hand using the raised hand icon um, at the top of your screen. Um, we will begin with uh, Selena. Uh, Selena, you may unmute yourself and then do your camera. Uh, please share your affiliation. Uh, Selena, are you able to unmute yourself?
Why don't you go ahead now, Selena? Go ahead and try. There we go. Now I can. Uh, there we go. Okay, perfect. So my name is Selena Mahavir, and I'm actually serving as the federal policy advocate with Community Water Center. Um, so just in short, uh, CWC advocates for community-driven solutions in order to advance the human right to water in California. And we have particular focus, especially in Central Coast and Central Valley. So my question for you guys is, uh, can we expect to see any project implementation funded through the BIL that's dedicated to developing groundwater recharge? And with that, what can we expect that process to look like as far as community engagement and public process? Uh, thank you, Selena. Um, Avra, are you able to, Matt, do you want to take that? And perhaps Avra can. Avra should start it off. I, I can I can add color commentary to it. With, uh, some sure. of the programs that are not underwater smart. Yeah, no worries. Um, this is Avra Morgan. Sorry, I don't have my camera on. I had a little internet blip, um, so I'm on my phone. So we we fund aquifer recharge projects, typically under our drought resiliency projects funding opportunity. And um, that one we expect to come out in the spring. And there have been lots of aquifer recharge projects in California under that program. <clears throat> and I think you'll con continue to see more. Uh, as far as, you know, ability to get engaged as a community member, um, if there is a, so for every project that we, fund, there's always some sort of NEPA process, and uh, that's the National Environmental Policy Act. And so when Reclamation conducts com environmental compliance for these larger projects, uh, there's always an opportunity to comment through that NEPA process. So that would be um, a way to get engaged. Um, it's also, if you were interested in getting engaged on the project side, um, there's always an opportunity to partner with eligible applicants to um, apply for a project. We encourage collaboration under the Water Smart program, so there are opportunities in that regard as well. To, to follow on to Avra's remarks, yes, um, Selena, very much. Our, our groundwater recharge is a part of Water Smart and is also part of the statutory authorization that we have in the BIL as well to fund uh, small storage projects that might have a groundwater component as well as large storage projects. So we are very much looking at those and trying to fund those where there are viable eligible projects that meet the, the terms of the statute and the program. So thanks for raising that issue. It's an important program area for us. Thank you, Selena. Um, are there any questions? You can submit a question by um, raising your using the handgun icon at the top. If you're on the phone, you can hit star five, and that will raise your hand and and will bring bring you up. Um, please let us know if you have any uh, questions. Um, Are there any additional questions out there? We'll give it another uh, 30 seconds or so if you have one. You can also submit them in chat. You can also send an email to usbr.bil at usbr.gov and we'll get back to you. Okay, um, well, Thank you um, to um, thank you to Commissioner Tutin for uh, providing the opening remarks, and thank you to all our presenters today. Uh, again, on behalf of the Bureau of Reclamation, uh, thank you for attending today's session. Um, we are dedicated to transparent uh, to dedicated to transparently implementing the bipartisan infrastructure law. Um, this is the seventh information session for the bipartisan infrastructure law. Um, please go to usbr.gov/bil. To view all the scheduled sessions and updated information, including the frequently asked questions, that that is updated regularly. Uh, you may also send your questions to usbr.bill at usbr.gov. Once again, thank you um, and have a good day. <laughs>